All right, hope everyone's doing wonderful today. Today, what I got in store is going to be opening up and checking out another interesting older card game. This one, I really have no idea what's too much about. I just saw it online a little while ago. I wanted to get some of the packs in a, a starter deck just to check it out, open up, see the art, see the feel, and just see really what it's about with you all. Anyways, this card game is called Mythos, the Cthulhu Collectible Card Game. I have a starter limited uh, edition deck. I have uh, three of the boosters as well. They have a booster one, a booster two, and a booster three. I think they're like different expansions, something like that. I'm not sure if they came out any more than these first three, but I just wanted to get my hands on these first three as well, just to see what it's about. I believe it's some sort of like, uh, let's, let's just read what it's about. Mythos is a Chaosum collectible endgame of authentic Lovecraftian horror. It features simple rules with complex strategies that allows players to attempt to narrate a series of adventures before going insane from the growing horrors of the Cthulhu mythos. Gameplay requires a uh, one deck per player. Alright, so it is a game about the Lovecraft horror. So it's like about horror stories. So it looks like I got a... Uh, Mikatonic Universe, got Cthulhu Rising, and I got Necro Necronomicon, and this is the starter deck right here. So it is some sort of card game about like dark themed, about like kind of horror stories, which is pretty interesting. I kind of like the purple background as well. Uh, Mythos on the front and the side contains rulebook, uh, investigator card, 16 playing cards, got uh, Chaosum Inc. I guess that is their brand. Got some sort of like dragon stamp seal on it, something like that. Got it again in the bottom. And when did this come out? Uh, copyright Chaosum, uh, 1996. So this came out in 1996, quite a while ago. And I did still get my hands on them. And I just want to open up and check it out with you all. So anyways, I just wanted to open up uh, the Starter Deck Limited Edition first. Let me know if you ever played this game when you were younger. Um, I heard good things about it online. But when I was a kid, I never really got into it. Nope. Anyways, let's just open it up. It doesn't look like there's a pull tab or anything like that. I'm really curious to see what the art looks like. Very curious to see what the art looks like. I don't know if there's going to be an inner seal in here. It kind of seems like they're just jumping around. So much fun to open up and check out these older card games for sure. I love it so much. Here we go. If I can open this up without damaging the box. <laughs> Having a hard time with it. There we go. Slide off the cellophane. And here we go. We already checked out the outside of the box, so let's just pull out some of the cards and see what's about. So it is a 60-card deck. It says Mythos on the back. The feel of them is just like regular playing cards, a bit thinner than Magic the Gathering cards is what I'm used to. Not sure how this works. And uh, what is this? The Haunted House. Your mother always warned you about the old abandoned house or site on one of these down by the creek, but here you are, sneaking in anyway. On a rickety shelf, you discover a tome so old it nearly crumbles to your touch. You become entranced by the secrets you read, barely escaping the attack of the monster that lurks within this place. You flee to a different inside location and safely uh, of the steadfast ally. Some sort of advertisement. That's pretty cool. Tiny little pamphlet. Looks like some books that they have as well. That's pretty cool. So I guess there's books of the lore as well. Got Goat's Wood. Uh, Dunwich and Call of Cthulhu. Cthulhu is such an interesting name. And right here, uh, I like these old pamphlets. They don't really do anything like this anymore. If anything, you're going to get an email saying, respond back by email. But this is back when they gave you actual paper. Cool. So let's check this out. What is this? This is um, the story deck. Got allies, adventures. Not sure if you like put cards in here. Education is 15. Beginning sanity is 14. Maximum sanity is 20. Your hand is 13. Interesting. Minimum three, maximum five. Allies, mythos, threat, story, deck, completed adventure. You got this guy smoking his cigarette with ghosts coming out of it. Got his glasses. He's a deep thinker. A little bit of a Rudolph Red Nose going on right here. Mythos, threat, haunted forest sculptor, haunted French sculptor. Knows French. <laughs> he knows French. Education is nine. Beginning sanity is 14. Maximum sanity is 20. Your hand is 13. Minimum 14. Maximum 5. Interesting. There's just like two different cards. I'm not sure if you like play with them. This is the French guy. Looks like his eye. He's got a demon in his eye. Scoping some crazy twisted thing. And this guy is a capable graduate student. Knows English. <laughs> Interesting. Not really sure. And I think this is the rule book. Small little rule book right here. Got the play sequence on the back. It says play turns. One play uh, one play each during each turn. That 
Doesn't make a lot of sense. Take a card from your hand and lay it on the table in front of you. Okay, rotate. Uh, location of the card, right side up orientation. Use one artifact, play sanity, announce effect, turn artifact crosswise. I think that's like words for tapping and untapping. Cast one spell, per sanity, name target, flip spell. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, end one artifact's effect by flipping it face down. Flip any one cr- uh, face down card face up, excluding spells, combat. Commit all monsters, commit all uh, any allies. Allies with enchanted weapons may uh, instead join threats as a monster. So you got, it looks like enchantments. Uh, you got cast spells one at a time, reveal monsters, uh, tally damage. End of round, you got a discard. Keep it at your minimum. Discard down to your maximum. Uh, reshuffle or a lobotomy. You gotta f- flip face up and right side up. All face down cards. So, okay. Bury great old ones and outer gods played the last round. Beginning of the round. Drop the 13. Repeat the turn sequence. Printed in Canada. Okay. So these are from stories from 1920s to 1930s. Let's just see what it's about. Let's check out the cards. You got card name, attributes, card value, and gate swirl. Okay. You got the card type. You got region of card, subtype, public attributes, or tome, spell icons. You got sanity, grain, or loss, card effect, expansion, or card background, uniqueness dot. Okay. <laughs> so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things for your card to identify it. Interesting, just a whole lot going on here. You got attributes, icons, gate swirl, inside, outside, cemetery, water, events, forested. You got fork, water, eye, death, Chithulu, yellow sign. What's the yellow sign? And then the elder sign. Interesting. You got the card value. Upper left corner is card value. Card name just kind of tells you about the cards. Important terms you got bury, you got combat, current location. Uh, defending alley got discard face up face down right side up got flip card basic game hand joining so there's just some keywords abilities right here just played mythos duck pass redraw story deck and walking just a bunch of things kind of go at it not sure if i'm gonna be able to figure out how this game is played right now but i just kind of want to check out the art see the feel of it and see what it's about your hand card summary there are nine types of mythos cards, allies, tomes, artifacts, and only found in locations. And some of these items are rather uh, specific in the location which they are found. Okay. Got weapons. So just a whole lot of information right here. Whenever you're ready to start playing the game, you can play it. And each of you definitely need your own deck. Got playing the game. Each player suffers his own Mithra deck, offering the player to the right to cut the cards. Each player then draws 13 cards from the beginning hand. Each sequential round will also begin to draw cards to fill up your hand to 13. At the beginning of your game, an investigator and his or her allies uh, considered to be outside during the day. No other attributes apply. Okay. You got one play per turn. So you got like artifacts, you got you can cast a spell, there's like different abilities like face down, flip, right side up, not really sure. You got passing, the story deck. If you know of cards to play, you can pass. Not sure what uh what the win is this game. What makes somebody win? What's the win condition? Let's see if it tells me who how you win. Uh, how do you win this game? First thing to do, okay. Is there anything back on here real quick? Real quick, I just want to see. How do you win this game? Uh, card name, uniqueness. Hmm. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to actually win this game. Your hand. Do, do, do. Weapons. Got goals. Got playing the game. Okay. The first card you play in the Mythos game must be either location or event. Okay. The integrator with the low sanity begins play. Should be around here. The story deck. It's got to tell you how you win. Traveling to a location. Spells. The missiles. Threat. Invisible monsters. Great. Oh, one combat. Tells you about combat. So there's combat in this game. The next round. 
Bury the lost, the dead. Bury. Alright, I'm about to just go into the... Into here. Uh, reshuffle, voluntary level. Alright, I'm not really sure the win condition of this game. I don't know if I'm just uh, missing it or what. But whatever, let's just kind of check out the cards. Looks like I got some people on the top. All of them, I believe, are just mythos backgrounds. They do feel like... Some kind of plastic-covered cardboard or something. You got Robert Harrison Blake. You got Steadfast Artist Knows English. He knows English. He's sitting there. Got the beautiful water in the background. He's holding some sort of Pandora's box. He's an ally. You got Home of the Laru Shrine. Uh, Shrewsbury. What a name. Creepy-looking old abandoned house. I saw that one scary movie that's out there right now. It's like about, like... These kids find like a book in an old house like that. Kind of reminded me of that right now. The ultra violent effect attacking monsters. Looks like some sort of coffin with green orbs on it. It's an artifact. While in play, this card makes all invisible monsters in any attacking threat visible, but adds one point to the card value for each affected monster. Okay. Where who drew some of these arts right here by? Uh, R. Wadi Smith. Got the doctor. Interesting. It just says doctor. Very interesting perspective. This sign doesn't feel like it fits there. Like a latrophobic effects opponent's uh, investigator. Not sure what that means. That like scared of walking or something like that. It's in a phobia. Fear of doctors. Oh, that's what it is. Lose one sanity point at the beginning of each turn. That sanitarium is in the top card of your story deck. You may not remove uh, this phobia in sanitarium. So maybe you win the game by taking their sanity and taking it to zero. You got the Hangman's Hill. Look at that creepy looking tree with the rope on it right there. It's a location. Arkham. Got all these symbols right there. Bizarre. You got the spiraling sort of vortex. Okay. You got a... Nope. Ken. <laughs> Look at this. It's like some sort of unicorn. Beast creaser. It's a monster. Greater independent. Generates a freezing cold. Randomly choose and bury one defending ally uh, when threat is revealed. Okay, Jewels of the Deep Ones uh, from Titanic. She dropped it off the edge. It's an artifact. Increase the card value of all Deep Ones. Feather, uh, Father Dragon, Mother Hydra. <laughs> Father Dragon, Mother Hydra. And certain corrupt uh, cultists by one point. Okay, look at this crazy art right here. This is by Tom Sullivan. Asylum for the Deranged. I don't know. He busted out of his straitjacket, literally restraining the nurse now. You got Greenwood, Location, for the top card of your Mythos deck. If it's a monster, it attacks immediately. Uh, it attacks you immediately. Allies may defend you, then discard it. Discard any other card drawn. You may remain here for one turn or bury Phobia. Bizarre. I wonder what the board state looks like. I wish they had a picture of the board state. This is some cool art right here by Lee uh, Moyer. Yeah, Yithatin Mental Contact. Affects opponent's card card play. It's an event, crazy looking worm creature. He's found the meaning to life in the middle of it all. It looks like he's got like a crab arm, got some like trumpet tubes going on. Your opponent changes his or her mind and buries the cards that were just played or whose orientations were altered except adventure cards. Ignore effects that those cards might otherwise have. So make them bury their cards. Got black binding. The art in this set, it's pretty fun. Um, the text is a little bit basic, but what do you expect? Love the art though by Sam Surely, it's a spell. Target ally must participate in combat this round. You make a fight. Got drought. Oh no, the poor skeleton guy drowned in the desert of Arizona. Got the sun behind the mountain peak. Really cool by Scott M. Fisher. Lovely art from 1995. Got the 95 down there. No location bears uh, the water symbol while the card is in play. Bury any storm event in play. Bury this card if any storm event is played. So cancel some sort of storm. Got the elephant gun. Just like from, uh, what's that movie? Not Tarzan, Jumanji. The guy came out of the game and he's looking. Got a weapon, artifact, elephant gun. Affects the value at three points to LA's value. He's crossing off all the elephants he killed. What a jerk. Got Golden Eye Society, creepy red sky in the background. It's a location, Arkham, Batman's from there. Uh, through small, the society possesses an impressive library of occult tomes by Alan M. Clark. Yellow Windows. Uh, look at that. You got the goblins running in the alley. This guy's hiding behind the corner there, hoping they don't see him. In the nick of time, just in the nick of time, he's found the corner, and they're going to run past by John uh, Sneeder. 
It's an event. Play this card, and uh, then pass by player on the earlier turn is voided. No passes have been announced for the current round. You may immediately play a second card. Okay, here we go. Got Father Dragon right there. It looks like some sort of iguana. It's a greater servitor. It's a monster. At one point to value card, if your investigator has jewelry of deep ones, which we did have. We had that jewelry of the deep ones. Where's that card? There we go. The jewelry of the deep ones for Father Dragon. Uh, deep ones joins with Mother Hydra and deep ones and Shaga. So, Mother Hydra and Father Dragon love each other very much. Got Charles Dexter Ward, creepy looking face by Todd Lockwood. Add two points of value to this card while you have a corrupt cultist in play. So it's all about like scary themes this one. Creepy. Looks like he's in some sort of mental hospital. He's in the sanitarium. It's a location in Arkham. Signs of the Kish. Not sure what that is. Some sort of cloud spirit. Interesting purple background going on. By Michael Kellner. To spell. By, uh, what is this? Ithtaki Storm Waning Moon. He's huge above the fence right there. Great old one. It's a monster. Due to the end's cold and the binding snow, uh, you lose one sanity point each time you play a travel card. And when you alter uh, location cards, orientation. You are safer in a city. <laughs> you are safer in a city. What the heck? No investigator may gain sanity. By Tom Sullivan. Creepy looking art. Looks like a broken back going on. Got claustrophobia stuck in some sort of cage right there. By Stephen Taylor. It's an event. It's a phobia. This is cool. Really like the art on this. A lot of fun. First Baptist Church. A lot of buildings with a lot of yellow lights going on. It's a theme. Obviously, buildings are a lot creepier if you don't show what's in the windows, but you just show the yellow lights going on. Where is that guy? There you go. Got the yellow lights going on. You may return. You may remain here for one turn and bury one phobia. So get rid of a phobia. Stay inside. Stay safe. Beautiful blue and green background, though. Got Anne White. Who drew this one, by the way? By Lee Mayor. Got Anne White. Creepy. Not sure what's going on right there. She's having something creepy witch going on right there. Got a housekeeper. Knows English. Yep. Don't come in my house. Got dynamite. She's standing there with dynamite. Is she going to blow herself? Does she think it's a candle? What the heck? Add six points to Alley's value. One weapon per alley is uh, if an alley is buried. Also bury this card. Discard both dynamite and alley. Use after combat. Artifact weapon. Looks like she's literally thinking it's a candle. Not smart. Got night. Gaunts. Creepy looking bat creatures. A whole bunch of them. Interesting kind of swirly background. By Tom Sullivan. This art doesn't fill up the whole background. This one's more widescreen. These ones are longer. This one there's actually some... Top and bottom. I like how the tail and the wings kind of go above it. It's a monster. Lesser servitor. Bacteria phobia. Phobia. Scared of bacteria. He's got to use gloves for everything. Creepy looking eyes book right there. He's visualizing all of the the cells and stuff. The germs. Fear of germs. This is one sanity point. If you're an elderly, have a weapon. Tome or artifact. When this card is in play. And each time you play an artifact, tome or weapon card. So items bring the germs. Got barrier of the Noctith. Not sure what that is. Looks like some opening of some sort of portal. Reduce the value of lesser, greater, independent monster and target threat by two points per card. It's a spell. Hmm, looks like a music visualizer. The Arkham Advertiser. Go in there to get your sign. Location. All reporters add one point to their card value uh, when this card is in your current location on your story deck. <laughs> oh, this is a cool art right here. By Thomas Gerald Adams. Got the rats coming right at you. Got pack of rat things. You don't even know what they are. They're rat things. You see a dead body in the background, a corpse, and they're just eating it, coming out from the woodworks. Creepy. Monster right there. Thieves in your attic. Oh, no. They're living in your attic. Come through the window. It's an event. Randomly select one artifact card, not a tome, that your opponent must bury, then bury this card. Got a Nungum gardener. He's a gardener. He knows English. He's a farmer. Got the lightning in the background. What is he doing outside? Creepy looking face. Nice watercolors by John Bridges. Got... Uh, Cultis des Goules, speaking French, the cult of the French ghouls, it looks like. Got Hulk's friends right there going on. It looks like some sort of goblins. While this tome is in play, increase the total value of your threat by one point. Any living dead are a part of it. Not sure what that means. You got the dead and then the little turtle right there. You got Tome, the Laurel Street Cafe. Oh, wow, Laurel. I feel like I've heard of that area. Um, to City Business, Arkham. You may remain here for one turn and bury one Fomia. A lot of smoke everywhere. Got the newspaper there. Everyone's just getting their information. Nice stained glass windows in the background. 
Looks like from uh, the 1930s or 20s, like they said, by Chris Adams. Got Serpent Pole. The serpent is sitting there with its robe on. Very interesting. It has a tail doing some sort of astrolabe or doing some sort of chemistry with its books everywhere. Joins with one serpent people and with weapons. Bizarre serpent creature. Got skeletons coming at you. Creepy skeletons. Uh, just a monster. Living dead skeletons. Bypass combat with all cards in your opponent's threat. Add one point to their value. Knight or either of your opponents is in cemetery. Join other living dead. Okay. I'm not sure if any of these cards are rare or uncommon or anything like that. Or if they're just all, all the same. I don't know. I don't know if these decks are all the same or semi-random. Anything like that. Really have no idea. Got police investigation. Like the fuzziness of this picture by Andrew T. Kalachek. Cool art. Got Porter's Field. These poor guys all died. Reminds me of some of those graveyards that you see of all the army people. With all the similar looking gravestones. War is terrible. Whoa, look at this. Knee Deep in Doom. Many of the mythos tales feature a poor, unfortunate fellow who, despite the best of intentions and regards of merit, is wholly consumed by the horrors of beyond. Before your sanity runs out, you must have discovered uh, physical proof of the existence of mythos. 20 points uh, worth of mythos uh, 20 point worth of mythos worth of monsters in your story deck okay interesting it's an adventure card KJ Hooper private eye got a Shan Takas some dragon creature lesser server one but he's a dragon Dr. Marinus Binknell Willett it's a doctor and he knows English he's got the lightning in the background common theme reminds me of the game Clue or something like that Colonel Mustard. Goody Followers Ghost. Casper, except he got way big. Almost looks like a skull on the moon right there. Interesting art by Dranish Kedup. In the Frost. Creepy looking frost monster. Gonna bite him. Nameless Cults. A Nameless Cult of Bridewell Ed. English. It's a book. It's a tome. The first English edition of an, uh, uh what the heck? I'm not sure. Appeared in 1845. Accrued uh, inaccurate production. Some cult book. Got it. Estophobia affects an opponent. What is this? Fear of dawn. Scared of the light. Vampires right there. Lose one sanity point. If it's a day on each time the day event is played. Okay. Robert Blake's study. The study. It's a location. Got all of his books in his comfy chair. Got cloud memory. Affects your investigator. Bury all phobias affecting your investigator. There you go. That's nice. Get rid of all of them. Got the... Uh, Martens Kin, some sort of kin. It's a monster, lesser, independent, creepy looking fuzzy guys. Boom. Oh, this is pretty art right here. Tempest, a mountain, countryside sight. Cool. There was thunder in the air on the night, and I went to a desert um, mansion atop Tempest Mountain to find a lurking fear. HP Lovecraft, the lurking fear. Cool. Got a uh, unsuppressed chillin'. Uh, Colton. What a word. Creepy looking guy. Very interesting lighting. Got catastrophic failure. Affects one weapon. The weapon literally just broke. You got the gun exploding into some crazy psychedelic colors right there. The weapon held by one alley malfunctioned catastrophically and dramatically. Bury that target ally and discard his or her weapon. So it didn't just malfunction. It malfunctioned catastrophically and dramatically. Look at this. Arthur Monroe. Look at that, the lightning and even in the windows. Creepy looking guy staring at the window in the rain. Wow, close the window on him. Colors of outer space, beautiful kind of green colors. Not sure what's going on. Is there an alien somewhere in there? Like the styes. Decide if the entity, in entity is visible, six value, or invisible, four value. The moment of revealing remain thus for the duration of combat, half strength in direct sunlight. A lot of words going on there. Got Bolton. Creepy looking guy, pirate leg going on. Bolton, got the lady's legs up top. Got sign of Ibn. Affects one threat. Got his purple hands. Interesting guy. He's like pixelated. Very creepy, creepy, crazy looking by Michael uh, Kethan. Got waxing moon. The moon itself. Got some trees in the background. Really like the, uh, the sky around it. How it's very blacked out. Bury any day or night event in play. Bury this card if any day or night event is played. Got Tommy gun. The Tommy gun shooting his bullets. Very colorful gun. Quit your own adventure. There you go. Use this with agreement of your opponent. That's pretty cool. Write whatever you want. My opponent loses the game. <laughs> That's fun. I, I like that. They included uh, make your own card. That's fun. Uh, really gives me points. Uh, 
Aylesburg Country Village location. Okay. Your first big story. The local newspaper wants your story. Cool. To get this story published, you must include the following elements that show a disturbing trend. Search for evidence in the Three Gates location located in the different cities or towns. Have known an alley that cost your sanity. Discovered a tome or artifact as evidence and get back to the press location uh, in its day. While in its day. Cool. Got a, a Pierce. He's a farmer. He knows English. Crazy looking R right here, but... Uh, Salvatore uh, Abinati. Crazy looking R, like pencil work or something like that. Wow, just bizarre. Love it. And then the last one I got in this deck is Deep One. Looks like some creepy looking mirror creature by Tom Sullivan. It's a lesser servitor. It is a monster. Interesting. It's a really fun R. I really like how they included a card that you can write your own adventure. I'm not really sure the win condition of this game, but I'm not really sure. Hopefully I can figure it out after. Anyways, let's just open up some of these packs. I do have a couple of each. I have uh, the Booster 1, the Booster 2, and then a Booster 3. So I'm not sure um, if there's only three expansions or not. It says 295, uh, 1996, Trademark of Chaosism. Let's just read some of this information on the back. Uh... uh Students of hyperdimensional physics are, as you search the world of knowledge that man was not meant to know, the ex, uh, expeditions of McCulloch University. Bloster's uh, pack array contains 67 new cards, so 67 new cards in this pack. Uh, as a mix of cards from the starter deck. Okay. So there's 67 new cards, but you can also get cards from the starter deck as well. I don't know if there's any foils or anything like that. It also fe features European locations, allies, and exotic uh, locos. Okay, so let's just open this up and see what this first expansion was about. See if we get any of the same cards we got from the starter itself. So it looks like I got... Uh, still say the same thing on the back, by the way. Anything look different? No. Got... Biblioteke? Uh, national? It's just a national library. Location in Paris. The French Library. Okay. Got a... L down shards, winter, winter's halls, ed. Interesting. It's like a class or something like that. It's a tome. Got bishops, brooks, bridge. Cool, cool picture. Reminds me of uh, Beetlejuice where they fall through the bridge right there. Location, Dunwich. Yeah, it's like in Europe. A day in the life of a Miskatonic University student. Sometimes university life can be exciting. Today is one of those days. This day takes you to three different... Uh, Miskatonic University location. In your speculative uh, civilizations course, you practice casting one spell with either barrier, circle, sign, or chant in the card title. During biology, you do, uh, dissect a monster. Finally, go to a field trip in the countryside where you attract an ally of a pos opposite sex as your inst investigator. Okay, so you get yourself a girlfriend or boyfriend. La Moyle Antronala. City artifact from Turnin. Some gargoyle flying down. Cool purple sky. Nameless cult. Golden Gibbons edition. Look at this creepy looking eyes by Roger Rao. Wow, I'm pretty sure he drew some magic cards. That's pretty cool right there. Got the tome. I was wondering if I'd recognize some of the art. I'm pretty sure they drew some magic cards. Look at the eyes. Creepy. The cults. Golden edition. Got the shotgun. This creepy guy's trying you to get off his land. He's got a shotgun. Go away, Mr. Shotgun. Got the Waxy Moon against. We did get a repeat. Got Devil's Hop Yard. Country site. It's a location in Dunwich. Just like a graveyard. All the bones underneath the earth. Cool. I think I got Henry Armitang. It's a professional. Knows English, Latin, Greek, French, and German. Wow, he knows it all. Morning found Dr. Armitang in the cold sweat and terror of a frenzy of a wakeful concentration. Okay, so he's thinking himself to sweat. Got Mother Hydra. There we go. Mother Hydra to pair with Father Dragon or something like that. Let's just get them together because I know they miss each other. Where are you, Father Dragon? Father Dragon, where are you? There you go, Father Dragon. So these cards pair together. Add one value to this card if your investigator has Julia the Deep, uh, joins with Father Dragon's Deep Ones, and Shulkus. So there you go. They're finally together. Got Professor a Wingate 
Uh, Peasley, Mr. Peasley, got his degree in the background. Of all living persons, he is the least likely to ridicule what I shall tell of that faithful knight. He's very open-minded. Knows English, Chinese, and Latin. There you go. Got the Necropolis. That's the name of uh, this card. No, that's Necronomicon. Necropolis, the countryside tome underground. Where is this from? Chevaretti location. All right, so that is the first expansion. Let's check out the expansion set number two. I have like three packs of the second expansion because I bought it off of a random lot on eBay and it just had random numbers of the pack. So we'll just check it out. Looks like the same same sort of border and background for all these cards. Got the Devil Reef Country Sight. Looks like some sort of frog creature right there. William Channeling Webb. It's a professor knows English and glyphs. He can read hieroglyphics, smoking his cigar with his Zippo in the ancient Egyptian cave. Got Dimensional Shambler. There you go. Looks like a uh, rag man or something like that. By Tom Sullivan, coming at you. Soul Seeing affects your investigator. Looks like some sort of jellyfish. Gain three sanity points when cast during a full moon. Okay. Schizophrenia. All these voices in her head. Her eyes are rolling back. Crazy looking hair with all the voices. Multiple personalities. You won't lose one additional sanity point each time that you cast a spell. Got the Rehelan text. Reading the textbook. Got Cthulhu in the background with his crazy looking mouth. Don't turn around. Got the deep one again. This one is actually, oh wow, it's actually right here. The deep one, we got that one earlier. Got a Amaz Priest. Uh, the Cottage, Territing Cottage, Countryside, Mismatic Valley. I didn't read the back of this. I'll check that out the next one. Star Stone of Manar. Got the Felwar Stone. Townsfolk Riot. Burning it down. This card is upside down. Would you look at that? And the last two cards are flipped. Uh, historic Order of the Dragon City. Where is this? Instalmouth. Get the green alien lights. Cool sky in the background. The Royal Geographic Society. I think in every one there's going to be one of these adventures. Tell us a tale of one location each. Lovecraft country sites, catacombs in Europe, and tomes in the Middle East. We expect your circle of friends to include four total allies, authors, artists, and scholars, professors, and inventors or explorers. You'll find gift to our humble lodge of a, a scandalous, dangerous artifact or tome costing at least one sanity point. Only proves your generosity. Welcome to society. Cool shadow person right here. So I think you kind of make up a story as well. Dread Curse of... Azothia, some sort of spell. Let's read the back of this real quick. What is this one? 1996, still the same year. What is this? In sunken Rila Dread, Chithulu lays dreaming, waiting until stars are right. Once more, the Chithulu Rising Booster Pack may contain 67 new cards from uh, only these booster packs, as well as a mix of cards from the starter deck. So it has the second edition, and then also cards from the starter pack as well. Okay. Right, let's see if I can get these open. go. What do we got here? We got some sort of a uh, Mr. Avrela. Hard to tell what's going on in this picture. Target monster becomes invisible for the remainder of the round. There you go. Invisible. <laughs> Star spawn of Cthulhu. Okay. Cthulhu's eye right there looking right at you. Got a Ponape scripture. Interesting. Made out of blood or something like that. Written on very primitive paper or leaves. Maybe leaves. You may breathe underwater while this card is in play. Bizarre. Powder of Insbe uh, Gazi. Look at that. It sounds like prehistoric CG jar. <laughs> Attacking invisible monsters are now visible for the end of this turn. You hit him with some powder and you can see where he's at. Gregory Gamel Angeli. This guy is an avatar, uh, an ally, a provider. He knows English and glyphs. Got a Othen tea. South Pacific, the islands. What are these things flying there? Not sure. The island has no airship. And we use travel by sea car to get this location. Got guests. Against the wall, he looks like more scared than I am of him. Bury this card if direct sunlight is in play. At the moment that is revealed, uh, join guests. All right. So uh, sunlight gets rid of him. Got Necronomicon of D edition. Creepy looking alien eye. Howard Lovecraft. Creepy. Ward Mansion. Cool. Sitting above the city. <laughs> Looks like a scarecrow tree or something. Again, these ones are flipped upside down. I wonder if this pack will be the same. Got Roby Harrison. <laughs> Interesting lady. 
got Book of uh, Dezani. Knows the language of Chinese uh, Herborian. While this card is a play Hyperborean. Never heard of that. Uh, Holster. Hmm. I got one more pack of the Chutulu Rising Booster 2. And then we're going to check out the last two packs that I have of the Chutulu. Uh, no, of the Necronomicon. If I can open this up. Rawr. So I don't think there's any foils or premium cards or anything like that. I don't even think there's rarity in this game. I think it's more of just a collectible card game where you kind of play with some scary stories. And I'm not even sure the win condition. Easter Island, you got the Tiki Heads going on right there. Do you know that most of the bodies of the Tiki Heads were actually buried? Again, the Mist card. Spawn of Cthulhu again, so a bunch of repeats. Okay, there's not a whole lot of cards. Wow, this pack is... um. Wow, got a lot of the same repeats. Invisibility of the Mythos. Got this kind of cool car from the 1930s coming on, driving right through there. Got Cthulhu busting through the earth. If target card threat contains more than three cards, including any great old one or outer god, randomly discard three cards and bury this card. Okay. Curse of the Rat Thing. Hard to tell what's going on in this art. Just looks like uh, a nose, a mouth. I'm not really sure. Your opponent investigates, is now affected by all phobias he or she has put in play for the remainder of the round. Okay, in the nick of time, we had this one in the starter deck. Father Dragon, uh-oh, there's two of them now. And again, this one's flipped around, so something happened with the booster packs too, where the last two were flipped. Eclipse of the Sun. You got some sort of ram god with some, like, pentagram on it. Creepy-looking weird ritual. Event day. Bury any day or night event in play. Bury this card if any day or night event is played. Last, oh wait, flip back around again. Call Powder of Nambi. Got some sort of red creature demon swirling around together. Hmm, some sort of spell. And then Body Warping of Agorgoroth. They're taking off the filter, revealing the creepy blue chew underneath. Lizard people. Place the target ally face down in his or her investigator's thread. Ally now function as a monster. Bury ally out of comment. All right. And then the last two packs I have, they are limited edition a Mythos, the Cthulhu Chalitable card game Legends of the Necronomicon. Contains 13 additional cards. What is this last little information here? Open the dreaded book of dead names and learn things that man were not meant to know. The Legend of Necronomicon booster pack contains 67 new cards. So each expansion had 67 new cards, but they also included cards from the original expansion, which I think is kind of lame. I feel like they should have just left it to the new decks, new packs, as well as a mix of cards from the starter decks. Within these Necronomicon cards, you will find location allies in the Middle East and perhaps uh, even the legendary, oh, I guess there is some sort of legendary card, Kitsab Azkuf, uh, source of the Necronomicon. Okay, so let's try to get that Kiskov card right there. And uh, again, all looking the same. Tree of the Sayad uh, Mander. All right, hanging stuff from the trees. Cario, create your own adventure. There you go. Got save the world. Following the mythos experience, you spy on an evil corporate ally down by the docks, uh, loading an awkward uh, container onto a rusty tampered. Follow the Mythos experience. You spy an evil corporate corrupt ally down by the docks loading an awkward uh, container uh, onto a rusty tramp steamer. Uh, stealing aboard, uh, you search his cabin finding two odd tomes and the orine formula. Hit, uh, hide during the day. Uh, the ship finally anchors uh, to an, at an unknown island at the clearing of your developed uh, a phobia from there, weird chanting but screaming. Uh, you end their unholy ritual with a weapon blazing, uh, slaying the foul cultists from the past. You're quickly, uh, your quick elder sign seal the portal just as the great old one or outer god begins to manifest. The world is saved, or is it? So you pretty much break up a cult that's happening on a boat and you kill everyone on there like a crazy murderer. Got surprise meeting going on right here. Shaking hands. Doesn't look too surprised. Uh, City Morgue. Creepy looking guy. It is the Green Reaper right there. There's Bone Saw. You can see the toe with the tag on the toe and the artist signature right there. Thomas uh, Granty Adams. Got uh, instability in the mythos. The door is open to Thulu who's busting out his tentacles. This poor lady. Uh oh. Circle of the Thatone. Thalone. Hmm, okay. Ooh. Got a Zack Tuck Allen. This old man. Uh, he's a bum. He knows no languages. <laughs> He's a bum. I, what does this card do? 
While this card is in play, add one to your maximum number of cards you may keep in your hand. Community upkeep. Oh, commutative uh, with the allies. Raise your maximum. Okay. So he's a bum. Hey, did we get that guy? I think we got that guy. We got the Kitzbav El Zef. He knows Arabic. It's a tome. While this card is in play, you may choose to play monster cards face up as allies or f allies face down as monsters becoming part of your threat. This was the legendary card. I don't know if that's... Is that like the best card in this? I don't know. Got, got the Mason guy coming on there. Corrupt cultist. He knows English. Old guy. Got a creepy rat on that rock right there. Very rabid. Hopefully it jumps on him. Got heroic rescue. The steadfast author. Friend and ally of yours has been abducted by agents of the mythos. Gathering your friends. You know you can rely on the reporter. The doctor of the private eye. And the wife corrupt cultist has lair in your cemetery. We are corner him with a weapon and capture his terrible tome. So you follow him to cemetery and capture him. House on the on the only court. Okay. And then uh, Alzara University, City University in Cario. Cool. Fun art. Really like that. Paintbrush strokes by Jason Voss. Nice name. Anyways, let's just open up the last pack of the third edition booster three from the game Mythos the Cthulhu collectible card game. And let's just see what we get. The old ancient uh, computer animated things. Wow, we've come a long way. Uh, crate, bed, corpse, dust. You got Boston Globe in Boston. City Press, Tome. All reporters add one point to their card value when this card is in your current location. Okay. Got the mummy raising from the dead. Velma fell on the ground. She's looking for his glasses. Looking for her glasses. Hopefully she can find him. Got a acrophobia. A fear of heights. He's just sweating, looking down. Big mustache. Reminds me of the movie Gangs of New York. The docks. There we go. We got something lurking in the water. City site uh, artifact. It's in Boston. While this is in your current location, as your turn, you may spend two sanity points to recover one artifact chosen from your story deck. Thomas E. Malone. Hanging out there. Looking on the ground. He's got his, uh, his badge and his gun pointing at you. Private eye. Knows English. Got the nameless cults again. Got the Phobia, Fear of Dawn. Got the Mason again. The Sun Worshipper. Travel by camel to these three different locations in the Middle East and meet two allies who speak Arabic. They speak of an ancient legend foretelling of a coming drought where the searing eye of God will be revealing in the shaft of a direct sunlight. Using the second camel card, uh, hasten to the great temple of Karnak. There, summon a fire uh, vampire to uh, uh, preparatorily worship of Amon Ra, the sun gun. Okay, there you go. Uh, so you need a vampire. Look at this. Interesting art. This is like a uh, photograph. Like Lee Mayer. Interesting. Uh, Island Private Hospital. So he's in a hospital and he's literally drinking his martini and smoking his cigarette. It doesn't look like he's in a hospital. A sanitarium. Very bizarre. He's in a mental... He's in a straitjacket just yelling. She's a nurse and I'm not sure. He's the guy profiteering from it. Okay. Uh, the Wheel of Mists. Cool. Reduce the attack of a greater or lesser servitude by two points per monster card. And the last card I got is Wheela Text. It's in Chinese. It's bolded in red right there. This tome can serve as any one of the three pieces of the Rela disc that you need to play before you can play Rela locations. No effects on Star Spawn. Interesting. So, uh, what did I learn from this game? Very fun art. I'm not really sure the win condition of this game. All I know is it has to do with uh, Lovecraft horror stories and uh, fun art. Uh, it kind of takes you all over the world. This is expansions. You got uh, America, Europe, and then uh, also uh, the Middle East in the last expansion. I'm really not sure how you win the game. It does seem like it's some sort of adventure telling game as well. I know that you fight monsters and you can play like spells and instants and you have phobias that mess with your sanity points. I think maybe you lose the game once your sanity goes down to zero or something like that. I think you have 13 cards in your hands. And uh, let's see. I just want to be able to see real quick if I can find out how to win the game. Do, do, do. Sanity points reflect your investigator's capacity to withstand the shock of encountering the unstuttering horrors uh, that compromise the Cthulhu mythos. Each investigator means a mythos game with uh, that continues on page 16. So I'm going to go to page 16 real quick. That's weird. Just like skip it. Uh, sanity points. 
No investigator may gain more than 20 marbles. Okay. Use some means to keep track of your investigator's sanity points. A 20-sided die, piece of scratch paper, pennies, other coins. Uh, our favorite, a bag of 20 marbles. The sanity will gain it and loss during the course of play. Always total, tally sanity points before taking sanity losses. When more uh, than one card affects your investigator, no investigator may gain more than 20 marbles, nor an investigator may lose more than all his marbles. Any points gained uh, above 20 are lost, uh, and points below zero are ignored. Okay, so if your sanity goes below zero, you still win. The goal of each investigator is to complete an adventure. Oh, there you go. There's the goal. There's a multitude of adventure cards, including among the Mythos card array. Each adventure card lists uh, the card that your investigator must either have in play or have in your story deck before the victory points uh, for the adventure are earned. Uh, the order in which these cards are brought into play does not matter. So somehow you have to win the game with um, an adventure card. Let's just see real quick. Where is one of them cards? Hi. There we go, an adventure card. So somehow this card can have you win the game. It's a mythos experience. So you like put this on the field, and this is, I guess, what you're trying to go for. So I think you need to... Uh, you have to have an ally. Uh, you can get it. You have to have a reporter, a doctor, and a private eye, and the eye of the... and the wife of the corrupt cultist. You need a cemetery and you need a tome. I think you need all those things in play to kind of play out the story of the adventure. And once you play out the story and defeat uh, the evil guy and take his tome or whatever, you kind of win the game. So it's kind of like a storytelling game through these monster cards and spells to kind of get it to tell the tell the story on the board state. Anyways, really fun to check out this kind of game with you all. Let me know if you ever played this game when you were younger or if you even heard about it. Uh, I never heard about it until recently. I thought it would be really fun to check out with you all. Uh, I don't think it's around anymore. I really don't. I don't think they have any more expansions than I'm aware, but I could be completely wrong. Anyways, a lot of fun art. I think I did see one artist that did do some Magic the Gathering cards. Other than that, the art is a lot of fun, and I do like how it's done by multiple artists, not just by one person. And uh, it seems like a fun little game. I do like how they have Write Your Own Adventure cards as well to really make the game your own, make it your own customized deck. And yeah, a lot of fun to open it up, check it out with you all. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you like these videos. I know they're a bit longer, but I have a lot of fun opening them up and checking it out with you all. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're all doing beautiful today. Keep on keeping on, and I'll catch you all on the next one.